So I came up with five poses. Well, you guys did so much better than me. I only came up with one. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's, it's fine. Well, I have variations on one. <laughs> yeah, variations on one. Like, uh, that's kind of the problem with character design is everybody does it differently. So then trying to go step by step is a little, a little challenging sometimes. But anyway, today I was starting with poses. And I have poses that show she's a thief, but some of them are a little problematic when it comes to character design because in this one where she has her arms crossed, it's going to cover her costume. And even though these aren't like turnarounds, it's kind of hard to present a character if they've got their, you know, arms over their chest and you can't really see what's going on with their design. So this one's kind of a no-go. Whoops, that's supposed to be an X. Then kind of the same thing with this one because there's so much overlap of her upper body over her lower body. We're not going to see the costume all that clearly. It's This is definitely good for an action pose later, but for now, probably not the best one. So this one kind of requires a wall. And in a, in a character lineup, hopefully at the end of this, we'll be able to line up all our characters so we can see the whole cast. So that'll be fun. But if one of them's on a wall, she would have to be on the edge, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But yeah, kind of the same problem where she's got, you know, her legs all crouched up. So it's kind of down to standing poses for the most part when we're doing a character lineup. So I've got this one over here, we'll call this A, where she's kind of gesturing just like, hey. And then we've got this one over here where I'm going to have one hand doing something with her hood or her mask and then the other one holding her maybe slingshot or dagger or whatever is going to be like that one. So both of those are fine. It kind of just depends on if I want to show her more playful side or if I want to show her more TV side. So I think I'm going to go with B. Now, if you guys want to show what you've done so far, this will be the time to do it. Okay, I'll, oh wait, well, I'll let Christian go first. I don't really have anything I'm that happy with yet. They're, they're just beginnings. Okay, yeah, that's all this is, just beginnings. I'll, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wait, hold on, let me, sorry. Oh, okay. Here we there go. go. Like a leading back, but, yeah. you know, again, something and sort of like, like that, but now I'm really... But now I'm realizing maybe it's not the best idea. I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, she can be leaning back because it'll still show her costume and everything. Yeah, yeah and you something for you need something to lean on. Yeah, but you know she can lean on a character that she. I was just gonna on. say that that would be pretty funny if she was leaning on a shorter character, maybe the mouse character or something later on. Yeah, that'd be some nice interaction. Yeah. Also, I tried to draw like what she'd look like without the. the oh, without the mask. mask? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I need to work on it. Oh, by the way, I decided she's a calico. Oh, a calico cat. Fun. Yeah, like like a little black right here and a little orange right here. I oh, yeah, to, like, that would be super cool. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I think the pose is good. Yeah. Thanks. So once we have a pose, I thought we'd go over just a little of the basic sort of cat anatomy and kind of review these digigrade legs because you'll probably need them when you do your, your design. As I've said in previous videos, instead of deleting all the ones I don't like, I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Take one off and save that just in case. Later, I forget, how did I do this? I'll have something to refer back to. Oops, let's get rid of that blue one. Then I'll go control T on my favorite one. Did I screen share again? I can't remember. Nope, I don't think I did. <laughs> Just talking to myself. Zoom meeting, share screen, here we go. Fire alpaca, share, okay. So I cleared out all the other ones that were rejects and then I just enlarge my one that I like, even though it's barely the semblance of a character. A little bit too big. It's a starting point. 
So then just to keep things organized, I'm going to make a folder and I'm just going to call this one archive. Anything that I'm not using right now but want to keep, I'm just going to stuff it in that folder so that I don't have to see it. And now I'm just left with this one. Yeah, cat face. Okay. Put a new one on it. Oops. Just call that one blue because I'm going to start sketching in blue. So then we got to make some actual anatomy choices within all of this doodly mess. So I'm going to lighten up this sketch until I can barely see it. Can you guys still see it? Yeah. Kind of? All right. And start putting in some of the anatomy. Let's start with the legs because those are the most difficult. So when I'm doing legs, actually I'm going to start with the torso. I'm going to go ahead and sketch out her general body shape and we're thinking about what function her body shape has. Even though there are ballerina hippos in some animation, if we want her to visually look like she's fast and sneaky and agile, she's probably going to be slim and lean, possibly short and small. So I'm going to keep her torso kind of on the skinnier peanut shape. And I want to show exactly where her legs are attaching into this torso. So I'm going to just carve out kind of an oval here. And from that oval is going to be her thigh. On the other side, since it's facing away from us, I'll just carve that off. You can think of just like underwear or swimsuit that make those same curves and then get her other thigh in here. Whoops, trying to stay on my red sketch so I don't lose the action in my posing. I also want to be careful we were talking about those tilts. So I was going to have one tilt that way and one tilt that way. So I want to make sure that she's tilting in her hips, which she's not doing at this moment. So what I have to do is lower this closer leg. Easily done with digital art. We just lasso that sucker. Take our move tool, move that down a little bit. All of a sudden, she's tilting her hips. I'm going to rotate a little bit also. Basically, the top of this hip to the top of this other hip that's behind here. I want to have that tilt there. And then you just patch up everything in between. So once we have the thighs and the kneecap right on the thigh, that's all the same as humans. Up to this point, you can just think exactly like a human. And then what's going to change from here is that the calf is going to be a little shorter. That's a little short for a human, right? This one too, it's a little short for a human. Because what we would call the heel is going to be that little change in direction before we go down we think of as the foot and then get to the toes. What if you have one that's facing you? You have your knee and your calf and this is facing you. What do you, what do, you do about this little turn here? Basically you can't do anything because you can't see it but we remember the foot and how it wedges right into the ankle bone so sometimes if you put that little this little arch in between the leg and then start flaring out Oh, yeah. That's kind of like how you describe this little ankle turn when it's in front view. Another little thing I saw in some little drawing meme is that uh, toes, instead of going straight up and down, like we tend to draw them, some animals, they lean inward. So you've got kind of two toes leaning one way and the other two toes leaning the other way. Oh. So that's something you can try if you want to. Then I back up and kind of go through my checklist of best drawing practices. We talk about overlapping, we talk about tangents, we talk about placement, and I just kind of double check, have I kept this tilt throughout every joint? Whoops, no Whoops. I didn't. No, I did not. So we're going to fix that. Oh, another thing I should mention is that because we're going to line all these characters up, you probably want to have your dog on here somewhere so that you can have the same ground plane. Meaning I don't want to make her feet on a different perspective than his feet. I want to keep all of their feet fairly, fairly flat. 
So we can't see too much of the top of the toes, if that makes sense. Because if I draw her, and we can see the top of her toes this way, and she's standing next to him, her foot is going to look like it's flying off into space, or like being lifted off the ground that's supposed to be right here. So let's fix that. Get rid of diggery. I think it's easier just to keep in mind, OK, the ground is going to be flat. If you need to draw a straight line, remember you hold down shift, boop. Well, it's a thick ground line, but that's OK. So can I still have a tilt in the hips and the legs if I have the character standing on flat ground? Absolutely. It'll be the change of the posing of the legs rather than the perspective, because she can be bending one knee more than the other. Particularly if she's got her weight on one leg, that leg will probably be straighter. Let's see. And usually it's the higher one that has the weight supported on it. So if I say that's the higher weight leg, then I can just bend this knee more, tuck that calf behind a little more. This is where I get super messy and I try to stay cleaner, but it doesn't always happen. Every once in a while I check back to my original thumbnail. I feel like I'm losing some of the action I had. Let me raise this up so you can see it again. I feel like I had a much clearer tilt and a much clearer weight on that leg in this one and in the blue one. It's kind of evening out. I'm kind of losing it. So don't be afraid to start over. It happens. Let's keep our red one on here this time and see if that helps with the legs to stay where they're supposed to stay. Again, thighs, knees, exactly the same as people. You know how to do that. I'm just going to make the calf a little bit shorter. And as the foot extend, land on the toes. And I'm going to angle out this thigh so that you can see she's not having her weight on that leg. Super sketchy. Maybe that leg should be more forward. Maybe we'll see her toes more that way. You can see I'm practically coloring in some of these shapes. That's just my particular workflow. I like to see the silhouette sometimes and see how my shapes are coming out in silhouette. I think she's getting a little hippie here, so I'm going to slim her down again because I'm thinking agile, climbing, crawling, ducking into very small places, lean and agile. on a neck there. I feel like my correction is too high. Then for the arms, same. Same kind of thing for the arms. One thing I have noticed on their hands, some people draw more like paw type fingers, kind of like Zootopia, where instead of something like this, when we're drawing human hands, we have the palm, we have those straight lines on the outside, curved on the inside. Nice long fingers, curve, 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 curve. But with animal hands, you still have that same palm area, but the fingers only have kind of two curving straight lines. That sounds really awkward. <laughs> curving straight lines. Curving straight lines. Yeah, curved lines on top, but curvier lines underneath. So we get more of this kind of paw look. Almost all of them have claws or nails as well. But even the thumb tends to have a real thick pad. Oh, yeah. And you'll get a more animal type look. Really thin wrists, and then you can go from there. So that's the main difference I've seen in kind of animal hands. 
So up here where she's pulling off her mask, let's see. Get back. Get my pencil and make the tip smaller. Actually, I can go get a pen and just do it that way. Same process, I'll probably sketch out her palm without her fingers first, and the back of her hand. And then maybe I want just one finger hooking into her mask. Get those big fat pads on the bottom. Her nail's going to be pulling at the mask there. And these will be just tucked under so I don't have to worry about those. Skinny wrist, so I'm going even thinner than I would on a human. And we have the same kind of thing with uh, our other anatomy class where we're deciding which is the straight side and which is the curvy side. You can do either way. If I'm going toward her elbow here, I can make this the curvy side and that the straighter side. Or I can swap that around. I can make this the flatter side and this the curvier side. It really is more important to have one straight side and one curvy side rather than, oh, did I put it on the right side? I don't know. So don't worry about which side you pick, but do pick one side to have more angular, the other side more curvy. So I think that's enough to get going. We've got legs, hands, slim torso. Go for it. You don't have a pose yet. You can use this one because <laughs> you know it's your chance. Or no, I won't force you guys to do that, but feel free. That's all I should say. Feel free to just use my pose. Try to get that tilt, make that leg look like it's supporting the weight. I think I might even move it a little bit more. It just seems a little bit too out. I want it underneath her to support her weight. Let's tilt that in just a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. Hi, I'm back. Hello.
I'm enjoying the way that, that this is going, because at first I was scared too, she's going to be a really generic thief. But I'm enjoying the direction this is taking. All right. It, it, it's funny as it becomes fun. You sort of find a character as you're drawing. Yeah. Yeah. My worst fear is always that they're just going to look super duper generic. It's not a failure. They're just not done yet. No, I said my worst fear is not that. Just fear. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing to be afraid of, though, because even if it does turn out super generic, you can Change still it. work on it. <laughs> Yeah, you can still work on it until it's not generic. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, I have those fears too, where I'm just like, oh, how am I going to make this character not look boring? But I shouldn't stop there if my character is boring. Just keep going. So I'm not even going to make clean line work. I've got the silhouette pretty much decided. I can see her body shape. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer and shrink it down so I can do some clothing variations. Oh, hey, can I show you what, I, what I've done so far? Sure. Yeah. Can you stop sharing since I'm doing a boring part right now anyway? Yeah, here's what I'm going for right now. Yeah, yeah. So you've got clothing on her already. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I gave her puffy pants. I decided to give her like a like um like you know fluffy pants because that makes it a lot easier on me. Mm -hmm. Smart. Firewarm? Smart. Yeah, because they're roasting a chicken, so of course anything that's in the oven is gonna make our alarm go off. Yeah, sorry about that. Let me see if I can mute my mic, because that's annoying. A little fire drill. A little fire drill, yeah, a little fire drill. Oh, there yeah, it is. Oh, okay. It stopped before I could find the mute for the mic. But yeah, she's coming out nice. She's got her hood, her mask, her puffy pants, puffy tail. Her little jacket and stuff. Yeah. And one nice thing about an animation project is you can't make them too complicated anyway, because somebody has to draw this a million thousand times. So they don't want all kinds of little doodads. Oh, this might be a little complicated then because I gave her like the hood and the and it's like some I don't know what that's called, like like on the jacket and then here's the actual jacket and it's kinda got puffy sleeves. No, I think it's fine. Maybe... I just wouldn't add any like little fringe or like a complicated pattern. Ah, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'll let you do your thing now. Let's see, I gotta get these separated. Kind of the same thing. Let's lighten those up. out some different clothes. I don't know what clothes look like, so I go grab my reference. And I pick three or more to steal from. I like the bandages on her legs there, or the wrappings, so I'm going to steal that. Whoops, not with that thick brush. Notice I'm not drawing beautifully, just getting my idea down. I've wrapped legs there. Maybe she'll have less puffy pants. I'm going to slim fit. 
I gotta find another one to steal from. So let's go up here maybe. Got a cape. What do the other one have? Oh, I kinda like the collar on this one. Didn't find another one to steal from. I kind of like her shoulder pads, and they kind of look like feathers. And we'll have some of that. So there's stolen set of clothes number one. <laughs> On this one, maybe I'll steal the shape of the whole top. But that's okay. Nobody's going to know. Stealing like an artist here. Actually, I'll leave off the uh, shoulder pads on that one. And find another one to steal from. There's that guy picking the lock down here. Oh, he's got like padded... Some kind of quilted leather thing going on. That's kind of cool. Maybe I'll steal that. Oh, he's got an armband with some cool things. I'll take that. Or lock picks could be stored there, maybe. Zoom back out, find somebody else to steal from. Oh, yeah, a little flip flop. Look at that. Maybe I can make some tiny little shoes that only go on the toe portion. I don't know if I've ever seen a character with like tiny shoes that pulled them off. All right, that means it's more original than I thought. There you go. <laughs> Maybe this one has another layer of skirt. And something for the hands. Maybe fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves are always cool. They're used a lot though, it's the only problem. Those motorcycle gloves. Maybe this time instead of ears cut out of her hood, her hood is actually built with like little ear coverings. A little stitching over there. And that whole thing. Just her eyes are cut out. All of this is good. Maybe her mask ties in the back, but then it flows. So I pretty much stole everything from these costume designs from other references, but hopefully it doesn't look like any of them. That's the beauty of stealing like an artist. You have to steal from a lot of different places, add some of your own touches, that's how artists create. Already 611, so we've got maybe 20 minutes left, 15 minutes left. I 
think it's kind of interesting how with the first character you did, it was very animal-like, but the second one is very human, human-ish. I think because her face is covered up. Because my dog, I thought the only kind of doggy part of him. Let's see, let's take a look at him. Oops. And he's got the same animal hands. Oh, I guess, I, I guess you're right. It just surprised me because. Oops, I got so many layers here. Oop, oop. He's definitely got more of a dog face. I think in this one, since I haven't put on her cat face yet, she looks more human. Yeah, like, when you just make her head a little cat-shaped. Yeah. I think once I get her, her, like, nose sticking out there. Oops, what layer am I on? She'll look a little more cat-like. She'll probably widen out her head, too. Give her some cheap fur. Yeah. Because, like, the way you were doing it before reminds me of, like, remember that animal comic you were telling me about where it's like about the cat detective guy and like a, a lot of the guys look you know like animals but then yeah. like the girls kind of just look like reskinned humans yeah 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 i'll definitely work on her face and make her more cat like yeah whenever people do that it always weirds me out because like I don't know if they do it because they think it's cuter or they think it's hot, but to me, it always is like giving like a animal character like a humany face, like really like off-putting to me. Mm. I used to love stirrup pants when I was like twelve, so maybe I'll try some stirrup pants. What's stirrup pants? They actually have this little elastic at the end of, you know, where your ankle is, they have a little piece of elastic that goes underneath your foot. I have never Keeps your heard pants from riding up, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think that is their, their thing in life. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, you can look them up, stirrup pants. Oh, yep, there they are. Looking at them now, I, I think I've seen like drawings with characters with pants like that. Some stirrup pants, yeah. Well, that makes me think of horses, because stirrup on a saddle, horses, and then I was thinking of horse riding pants, and there's those ones that have a very unique, like, diamondy shape to them, and, like, really puff out at the thighs, like the British. Trod purse. Yeah. Let me try that on my character design here. Might stop her from crawling through some smaller spots, though. Maybe they're deflatable. They fold up. Yeah, those definitely remind me of riding pants. Yeah. He's so funny. Oh, they should wear shorts. I didn't even think of that. Maybe you like their shorter pants. They should got like an asymmetrical hem or a petal hem. And they can opposite. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I stole your kind of riding pants. Do it. Because I like 
artist. Yeah, because the puff. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Feel like an artist. Yeah. Yeah, because honestly, like, I didn't like how round this character was becoming. Yeah, if it gets too round, then she doesn't look as agile. I don't think not as fast. Yeah. Oh, maybe it even comes down and covers her tail up until that part, maybe. That might be a thing. Just about 10 more minutes. And this will be another finish up on your own assignment. As for me, I already know that I don't like that costume, so I'm not doing that one. I kind of like this one, but it almost looks more sci fi than fantasy. Yeah. You could put a belt or something. Uh, still looks. Not quite what I'm going for, even though I like the design, just doesn't seem to fit with the world. Kind of like that one. I like my first one. Okay, yeah, not that one. That one's too sci fi. So the remaining two. I like those pants, though. But... Yeah, the pants were nice. Maybe I'll do a couple more thumbnails and try adding the pants. To Put the those pants on somebody else. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll do that. I'll just take the parts that I like and <laughs> move them over. <laughs> These buttons look a little too fancy. Though. Let me get rid of those.
Sometimes we get quiet. I wonder if I accidentally muted this video. This video. <laughs> <laughs> I tried uh, some music before, but I wasn't sure. Sometimes we just need to concentrate. One thing I liked about this art class was looking up various calico cats to figure out what pattern I want. Yeah, research is fun. Most of the time, sometimes not, but for animals, yeah, for sure. Eh, kind of like in that one. It's also interesting how how it's like with the calico cats, like. Either the orange spots can appear to have stripes, or the black spots can be like a bit grayer and have stripes. Interesting. I never yeah. even thought of stripes within spots. Yeah. It's a thing that they do on like, people do on like warrior cats characters a lot. Mm. I don't think I'll do it on this character though, because I don't want to get that complicated. True. In theory, somebody's got to animate that. Oh, jeez. I just realized how big, like, the dog character is. That shrink them up. It's all right. Just shrink them up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we'll both that one. About three minutes left. Part of me is tempted to make her bigger than the than the dog because I have a cat who's bigger than both of my dogs. Yeah, one of our cats is bigger than our dog, so it can totally happen. Particularly since you picked a kind of a small breed of dog anyway, like it wasn't a Great Dane or anything. <laughs> That's plausible. Yeah, although she is a big cat. Or at least everybody tells me how big she is. Mm. But I but before her I've only had one cat before, so I don't have much of a frame of reference. How many pounds? I don't remember. It's not the kind of thing I I, tr I try to remember very hard or like it sticks out in my mind yeah you must not be the one in charge of like flea medication or anything that has to do with how much your cat weighs yeah usually i'm the one who holds the cat while we give her yeah while well, somebody else does it all right <laughs> on here well, the uh, oh go ahead i was gonna say a big cat is gonna be you know 20 pounds is a big cat bigger than 20 pounds is a Huge cat. <laughs> Before you leave, just for fun, we're going to try a poll. A poll. Launch a poll. And oh, see how okay. This works. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't see any polls yet. Cool. Let's poll. Okay, I think I got them about the size I want. Although now that I look at it and I look and I see that she's kind of leaning back, so she might still be taller than him. Now that now that I've got like a little bit of the lineup right there. Yep. 
it's amazing how lining them up side by side just really points out. Oh, here, you want to see? Can I show you guys? Yeah, let's, oh, yeah, we can check on this. Oh, hey, that's cool. Okay, well, you can't check all that apply. You can only check one. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll have to fix that. So I'll, I'll check one. I checked three. Did, did, you were able to check I, three? Yeah. Mine, oh. oh, I checked the third option. Oh, you Sorry. checked the third option. Oh. Okay. okay well, here I they are. Cool. Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, let me see. Oh, hey. Yeah, they don't look too out of proportion or anything. No, she, she looks a similar height, but maybe a little bit taller because just as you say, she's clearly leaning back. Yeah. But she's looking good. Thanks, yeah. She came out way better than I than I first thought. And I'm I I'm glad. Okay, the other so good I, thing is they look like they can exist in the same world, which is sometimes a problem. Well, we'll see about mine. I have mine still on paper. Oh, well, I'll stop sharing real quick, quick. sorry. Let me My go. version of a digital class is not all digital. But oh, yeah. okay. Hey, it's coming along though. You got the yeah, same lean. Excellent lean, excellent attitude. Where do I get that lean? <laughs> hmm. Feeling like an artist, she said. Feeling like an artist, that's right. I, I like that, Mickey, so it's mine now. <laughs> so you guys are doing great. Little side note. Not a big deal, but I noticed that Kristen has one drawing, Michaela has one drawing. I had four different poses and four different outfits. So you guys are uh, committing a little sue. Oh, that's right, you didn't share yours. Okay, excellent. Woo! But I want to make sure you guys aren't shortchanging yourselves by only doing, you know, one. When you get so attached to one, you leave all your other ideas unexplored and you might be missing something. So maybe next week when we do the mouse. We'll try doing a couple, but yes, that's right. Kristen did pass on sharing, but you did do it. <laughs> you did I, I, do it. They're all unfinished, but that's still something. Yeah. yeah. They're lines on paper. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So next week is the mouse. And again, if by next time you can have the lines done, that would be great. I know we didn't get to coloring the dog this time. Maybe we'll color two of them at a time one of these weeks. But yeah, we'll do the mouse next time. Try to get your cat to a line stage. Yes. Yeah, I'll put it on. I'll I'll put it into the digital struggle. The digital struggle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hey. That's it for this week. Bye. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. 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 Bye.